I acknowledge my colleague's uh, comments that he just made, but he, he talked all about risk. And uh, all I want to say is I look at the opportunity that this document actually provides us as a council to talk to our community. And that's the important part we have to take here today. This is the start of a conversation. We do not need to get into detail around this table today. We need to go out and talk to our people, ask them what they think is going to be the right thing for our future. And I would actually imagine that the people of Christchurch want to see a bright future, and that comes with cost. So how do we fix that cost? And that's the question and the, and the discussion we will have with our, our community. And I do ask them to get up and actually make themselves known and what their feelings are and how they see the future being put together for the betterment of the, our, our future generations. Because the last thing we want to do right now is under, um, under sort of perform in a, in a way that actually does not deliver a great future for where people want to come and, and be a part of this city and, and uh, bring up their families here. We've got to make sure that we actually uh, do not actually uh, undervalue our future. And, and I think that's really, really important. So that's the conversation we've got to have with our, our public. Let's not talk about the risks, because everything in life has a risk. But we have to look at the opportunities. Thank you. Uh, Glenn? Thank you. I think it's a privilege today to be in this position of uh, putting out for consultation a 10-year plan. I'm not sure how often this will come around for elected members unless you serve on the council for a long time, but we're in this position today of being able to do this and then hear the submissions on that and make the, the final decisions. The first part of what I'm going to say is about the future because I know uh, the annual are encouraging us to, to take that big picture view and then I'd just like to come back quickly to the present. I'm a subscriber to Stephen Covey's definition of vision, which is preferred future. And I'd like to also uh, follow another one of his uh, principles, which is taking the end on view and looking back from 2025. And if I do that and try to look at Christchurch through the eyes of a visitor, these are the things which I would like to see, which are, are picked up in the consultation document, that we actually do have a cleaner, restored Avon with an expanded uh, river, uh, it could be a flat water facility, but that's more the government's call and resource. I think the, the river in that respect would have the potential to unite the city around the various schools and rowing, kayaking, uh, canoeing, waka'ama, etc. In the future, we can envisage uh, the river as part of the residential red zone, now a green zone, where its greatest strength is the natural environment, its wetlands and its green belt. I also see... Uh, that we are host to local and international sporting events around that river uh, with a renewed New Brighton as its destination. Through the eyes of a visitor, and I've come to see this in, in recent months, we're known to have the best water in the world, and so it's critical that we protect our low-lying, unconfined aquifers. Mm. We're also known for the warmth of our welcome and hospitality, and that actually goes a long way. Something else that's come home strongly to me too is the uh, accessibility and speed of uh, internet. Uh, this is something which Yanni and, and Jamie picked up on a few years ago and I didn't take much notice of it, uh, but I've, I've now seen it's critical if you're a, a visitor to another city. In the meantime though, we need to attend, in my view, to the basics first. We need to ensure that we have community facilities in this respect, I touch on two in my part of the town, uh, Rafiti and South New Brighton, that if we're talking about resilience, I think we owe it to our communities to come back with a plan. So we may say, oh, we're going to close this or alter this. But I think let's give them a chance to come back with a plan. I'm actually encouraging them to do that. If we want uh, our visitors, if our visitors say uh, we want this experience and the, the locals say we want the same experience, for instance over camping grounds, then we need to find a way to match that up. We need to fix our roads, that is community wellbeing. We need to restore our infrastructure. I'm also keen obviously on greater housing choice, especially around affordability and habitability, and I'd like us to stand firm on our Lifemark and Homestar principles, which we've also been pushing for. 
You know my view on assets, and uh, I'm happy for this consultation, obviously, to go out to the community, and we will have that debate at the end of that. It's been a privilege to get this far, acknowledge all the work of the staff and you as my colleagues, and I look forward to the coming months. And as with uh, Vicky, I enjoy that process of the local community being able to have access to us up close. It's one of the highlights of the year for me. Thank you. <coughs> Ali. Uh, just very briefly, um, we are in extraordinary times still. Everything needs to be on the table. I won't be supporting this amendment. It's not about privatisation. This is about possibilities, about partnerships, and it's about people, and it's about opportunity. And without the options in the document, without this appendix, we have fewer options for people to consider, and we need to keep this in me. Okay. <clears throat> is that all? Um, Tim? Um, thank you. Look, I'm going to actually talk to the the, the, the actual situation with regards to the Appendix 3. The, it reads, redefining a strategic asset. What is a strategic asset? Is Addington Arena, Hall Castle Arena a strategic asset? Some people may say yes, some people say no. Lancaster Park, without doubt, has an incredible history. I was there when I had the privilege of watching a friend run on to play one of the first um, A grade or, um, sorry, professional rugby league games there. I was on the embankment. The embankment hasn't been there for a while, and if you look at the, the, the um, stadium, it's, it's damaged, and the wording on it, and it couldn't be much bigger if they tried, was AMI Stadium. With regards to off-street parking, well, let's face it, Wilson's parking, amongst others, have a pretty good foot in the door there. And um, the council's shareholding and fee base. If we are going to look at redefining strategic assets, what is a strategic asset? Christchurch International Airport, without question, is. It is the drop-off point for the southern experience, and Christchurch is the anchor and the gateway for that. We have um, deep freeze there. We are the gateway to Antarctica. It is, without question, a strategic asset. The Littleton Port Company, import and export for the South Island. It's the biggest and busiest port in South Island. Again, absolutely essential to the South Island and Christchurch. And Orion, of course, owns our um, electric net, electri electricity network. And again, that is without question essential. So when we talk about Appendix 3, and it states in Appendix 3 that Council is not proposing that these be sold, the Addington Arena, Lancaster Park, all off-street parking, and the Council's shareholding in V-Base. What we're asking in, a, in a, this document is what do the people of Christchurch, what do the residents in Christchurch believe? And I think that this document is the last document that you would remove something because you may not want the answer from the people, the residents, the ratepayers of Christchurch. It is essential to leave it in this document and I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? <clears throat> All right. Well, well, I would like to say a couple of words, and um, I wasn't going to speak on the amendment, but, but I endorse what, what Tim's just said, and I won't be supporting the amendment. Uh, but I, what, I, what I want to do is remind people that this is the first time that the City of Christchurch will get to look at the true state of financial affairs of their city since 2009. That was the last time that an audited long-term plan went out for public consultation. So this is the first time that they're actually looking at the true state of our financial affairs. The three-year plan was not audited, and there are elements within it that we now know would not have survived the audit process. We know that for sure, having been through that ourselves. $398 million was put in that plan as savings to be found. We now know from the work that Corda Mentha did for us that, in fact, the council never intended to find $398 million worth of savings. It was their assessment, and in fact an agreed assessment, as to what the true cost of the horizontal infrastructure repair would be. And it was the total that would be added to the cost-sharing agreement that was subject to the independent review. We don't have the results of the independent review 
We cannot put that in the document, and it certainly is unsustainable as savings to be found. So we've had to add that into the, um, into the budget. We also found from Cordamentha that there were heroic assumptions around the insurance recoveries. Uh, it is, it, it is, it is a, 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 a challenge for a city to, um, to actually resolve what it is and, and is not going to do when it doesn't actually know how much it will gain by way of insurance recoveries, and we are working um, hard on that. Um, so Cordamentha identified these. What Cameron Partners did was they ensured that we could go to the public with solutions and they looked to our asset base and freeing, freeing up capital from our asset base. And that essentially is what underpins our financial strategy. There are those who will say, and in fact people who have already said, that we haven't required enough of the organisation in terms of the activities of the organisation, in terms of levels of service, and in terms of the capital programme. We've asked our chief executive to prioritise this work and to feed that into the decision-making process. As you see, the recommendation today has us making a final decision on the long-term plan by the 30th of June um, this year. And, um, and she's got a tough job ahead of her, but that is the job um, of the chief executive. As we have said in this consultation document, it is a base case, and we will continue to work on all of the issues um, that emerge, and as numbers crystallise, we will make adjustments. And that means that we're signalling in this document that in fact we may be back with quite a substantial change in the annual planning process next year. And I think by being upfront with people, they will perfectly well understand what the gaps are in our knowledge and how they might um, be improved over time. And that's, that's the sort of signal that I want to give in relation to the rates increases. Um, you know, I really want to kind of signal that um, we're, we're really going to be looking at those rates increases that has caused considerable concern out there in the public arena, the extent of the rates increases, and of course they're adding one year, then the second year, and then the third year in order to come up with a total. And, and what I want to encourage people to do is focus on the first year, because we will review it all again next year, and we will be assessing whether any of the changes that we can embed in place for that process can impact on the following year in terms of rates increases. So very much wanting to signal to the people of Christchurch that our focus is going to be making sure that this is um, uh, affordable as well as achievable. Um, I called my message at the front of this document, building resilience from recovery to regeneration. And I had so much feedback about how people didn't like the word regeneration. So I said, we'll come up with a better word. And no one has yet, so this is the challenge that I put to you councillors around the table, not so much for a focus. The reason that um, I, then, I then went to the dictionary to find uh, a dictionary definition of regeneration, and I found out it actually encapsulates what I was intending. And that is, is that in a post-disaster environment, the initial response phase is focused immediately on what needs to be fixed what needs to be got back on its feet. And then we move into a, a more of a recovery phase, and that's the phase that we've been in. And then the next step is regeneration, in my view. It means restoration, so it means putting back what was there before, but it also encaptures within its meaning um, new growth. So it actually talks about new ways, and I loved how uh, Glenn Livingston talked about you know, the capacity for that amazing swathe of land um, alongside our river, the what's currently known as the residential red zone, but, but actually says to me that this could be the heart of our recovery as a city and the connection between the, the city and the sea in, in a way that you can only imagine and it's and it's that sort of thing that keeps bringing me back to this incredible sense of opportunity that we have as a city and the incredible optimism that I feel personally about what we could achieve 
Um, we have a chance of a lifetime, and I said this in the introduction, to turn what was a disaster into the opportunity to create a smart, green, livable, sustainable, world-class city. That's what the people of Christchurch dreamed we could be and share an idea. And this is the beginning of a process to enable that dream um, to become a reality. So now it's time for the people of Christchurch to have their say on the financial strategy that can provide us with the base case to enable that to happen. So on that basis, I'll move to the amendment. And um, given that I suspect that there'll be a split vote on it, if we could have it up on the screen, if the people who support the amendment can <coughs> signal yes and the people who are opposed um, to the amendment to... It's not quite fair. Um, but, I, but I wonder if instead of being removed, it should actually be amended. Um, because it does actually make reference to a wider group of taxes. And it's certainly not very future. So okay. Okay, so the Appendix 3 be amended and be amended in the consultation document and that council continue including yeah, no, that's okay. That 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 No, no, but that achieves what they want to achieve, which is that these for at, there, there is a lot more in Appendix 3 than just this part of it. And the intention of the amendment is that simply these four assets remain on the strategic assets list. Yeah. Yep? And no one debates removing more than the No. That Appendix 3 be amended. I think it should be specific. Amended. Eh? Hey? Well, that the Appendix 3 be amended and then take out in the consultation document, be amended so that, so take out the word and, so that Council continue including on the strategic assets this, these, as strategic assets, da da da. Okay? All right, so if you are in favour of that amendment, press yes, and if you're opposed to that, press no. and that is lost. So um, we'll now move to the resolution, and I will put the resolution. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs>